Hello, this is the TradeSite U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview for uh, the week beginning Monday, January 25th, 2016, ending Friday the 29th. This is the end of January from a stock trading perspective. <clears throat> I hope you had a good trading week. We certainly did here at TradeSite. Futures and stocks were exceptional, except for Friday when everybody ran away and locked themselves indoors in the East Coast ahead of the storm. But the rest of the week was exciting. Here's a look at the ES <clears throat> front month futures contract daily chart. Um, you can see we swept on Wednesday the lows of August. So is this a double bottom or is this just uh, a bounce because that was the low last time and we're still going to head lower? We'll look at some of the other factors here in a moment and discuss that. Crude oil got a bounce finally, <clears throat> 32.25, dollars partially because of the storm, I'm sure. Gold was up 80 cents, not a big deal. So <clears throat> we had a big gap for the session. And we'll show you the gap. The S&P ended up closing up 37, but the majority of the move was the gap itself. NASDAQ 100 up 117. Again, the majority of the move was the gap itself. SOX up 10. It's not a big deal, although it does put it back above that 10-day moving average. Biotech's up 93.61. The VIX was down 4.35. Now, I'll tell you, this is an interesting one to watch because the VIX did not get over 40, which is usually the capitulation zone. So that's the one thing I would worry about. Remember, we got over 40 for a day at the low in August. We did not get over it here. So maybe room for concern still uh, lower in the markets. Trend 1.39, 10-day moving average 1.2. NASDAQ volume basically closed at 2 billion shares on Friday. That was the lowest of the week. We had a 3 billion share day on Wednesday, which was the uh, down and back day. And you did have volume on that down and back day. You just didn't have sort of, the, it didn't have the feel of capitulation. There was heavy volume. We're heading lower. We basically got to the middle lunch. We curled and we came back up. We did have a 50-handle winner in the uh, NQ futures that day on the way back up which is a huge winner for us, but it felt very organized. Capitulation does not usually feel organized. So with the VIX not at 40 yet, you still have to be at least worried that there's more to come. Advanced decline finally had a positive day, a big one, plus 1951 on the NASDAQ, plus 2453 on the New York. It's the best market breadth in a year uh, on Friday. Google up 1879. Apple rebounded five points after being down in the 90s. And there was a point this week where Google was in 10%, was within 10% of the market cap of Apple to overtake it as the biggest company in the world. Amazon up 21 points. It's a good bounce back for Amazon. Remember, most of these stocks that they didn't want to sell last year all the way to the close of the year, we talked about this, came into January. As expected, they didn't sell them off. And, you know, now a lot of that could be done. So if that's what this downward move has been about, is these big name stocks finally getting sold because people didn't want to lock in tax gains, that doesn't concern me as much for the market. And you have to factor in that that could be what's going on. Netflix down 1.63. All right, let's take a look at 10-minute candles on the futures just so we can take a look at the week. Now, remember, Monday was a holiday, so what you're seeing here, there's if I, the far left is Friday's closed. Monday, we're open for a few hours of just computer trading. Nobody's in there, so that's the short day. And then Tuesday, gap up, sell off, fill the gap, close even. Wednesday, gap down, and that was the day, remember, like I said, kind of curled, bottomed exactly at the bottom of the day, rallied all the way back up, didn't quite fill the gap, and then settled down a little bit. Thursday, <clears throat> basically opened flat, pushed a little lower, then went up, filled the gap from the prior day, and then closed pretty much flat in the afternoon. Really boring close. And then Friday, sort of the surprise, I think, was the gap up. I don't think I was expecting that. And really flat because of the, uh, the storm back east. Um, NASDAQ side, not much different. There you go. Didn't do much on Friday. All right. So what do we have to look forward to this next week? Well, a lot, and that's what we need to be prepared for. Let's take a look at the data that's coming out. Um, sorry, this is this week. Here's a look at next week. So Monday, the 25th, no data. Tuesday, Case-Shiller 20 city, city Index and the FHFA Housing Price Index, along with consumer confidence 30 minutes into the market, which can move the market. Meanwhile, a two-day Fed meeting starts on Tuesday. And then we've got the MBA Mortgage Index on Wednesday, along with new home sales, crude oil inventories, that's the weekly number, and the Fed announcement at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Obviously, nobody's expecting a rate hike at this point. Thursday, initial and continuing claims, durable orders, pending home sales, natty gas. <clears throat> and then Friday, another big one. Friday, we have uh, the advanced look at gross domestic product for um, the month of, I'm sorry, for the fourth quarter. That's a big number to cause a gap on Friday. Comes with the employment cost index, and then 15 minutes in the Chicago PMI, and a half hour in the Michigan sentiment number. So at least early Friday could be exciting. Of course, how do we really look at this week? Well, with the Fed announcement, you know, let's say this storm is as bad as it could be. Monday could be a little bit unexciting in the markets. 
if everybody's stuck back east. So be prepared for that. You don't overtrade when everybody's stuck at home in the, in the back uh, in the back on the east coast. I always say, you know, if you lost money trading on Friday, knowing that the market was going to be dead because of what was going on, you really weren't listening to our advice. Uh, on we uh, so Monday, depending on how the storm is, we could have some issues. Hopefully by Tuesday it starts to clear up, but you're starting a Fed meeting Wednesday. You know, usually it's all about waiting for the Fed, even though nobody's expecting another rate now with the hike. Uh, but it's always interesting to see their language. So Thursday could be the more interesting trading day of the week, and then Friday morning, because Thursday is going to be prepping you for that GDP number, and then Friday morning that GDP number itself comes out. Uh, charts as usual brought to you by eSignal 12. If you've not taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We'll help you out for a couple weeks. We do have some specials running this weekend only. It's the cheapest price we ever offer our uh, courses, mentoring programs. And uh, if you do find these videos useful, please like them on YouTube. It does help us out. Have a great trading week and a good weekend.